President Mehta announced that he will not decree the law on vetting of the state police approved a few days ago, stating that the implementation of this new process is aimed at controlling the process through the IACS. Just a few days before the expiration of the party registration deadline for local elections, Rudina Haidari says she will not boycott the polls. Defence Minister Ulta Jachka paid an official visit to the Pentagon received by US Secretary of Defence Patrick Shanahan, from where she stated that the US and Albania are strong allies. It's six o'clock on Friday, the 19th of April, 2019. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to RTV Aura's English edition. My name is Alexandra, bringing you the only daily update of the local Albanian news translated into English. On to tonight's top story and regarding the majority opposition debate, the president has taken another action that will have impl implications for the parliamentary and presidential institutional relationship. President Mehta announced that he has returned the law on vetting of the state police for review, which was approved a few days ago despite some controversies raised from MPs of the majority, including former Interior Minister Fatmir Jafai. The decree states that the implementation of this process aims to have the checks conducted by the Internal Affairs and Complaints Service, or IACS. According to the President, these changes to the law raise the conviction that the real purpose of the government in undertaking this legal initiative is not to reduce the financial costs for the implementation of this process, but to control this process through a subordinate assessment structure. This is asserted because the IACS is a structure that is directly dependent on the political function of the Interior Minister. The Council of Ministers argue that this new mechanism guarantees the same standard for the whole process as IACS's employees will undergo the vetting process as a priority first phase and the criteria and evaluation procedures will not be changed. Ulsian Chela is the first candidate to be registered for the open position within the High Council of the Prosecution for the role of Prosecutor General. Ulsian Chela is actually a prosecutor with serious crimes and has submitted the necessary documentation to the High Council of the Prosecution this morning, making him the first potential candidate to replace Arta Marku. The Council opened the race on the 19th of March after the approval of the regulations for the selection criteria, which, do no, which does include the passing of the vetting process as a prerequisite. The application period will remain open for 30 days. Then the council will make its evaluation within 45 days as to the fulfillment of the criteria by the candidates and will conduct interviews with those that have progressed to the next stage. Following the formalisation of the DP parliamentary group, the new opposition in the Assembly was greeted by a former MP of the Democratic Party, Astrid Patozzi, with a status on social networks. It seems that the situation created in domestic politics has turned towards the possibility of further cooperation between them. Haidari and Patozzi were photographed in a conversation a day before the session where the formation of the parliamentary groups was announced. It is not yet known what was discussed between the two Democrats, but it is thought that part of the conversation would have related to the attitude of the new parliamentary opposition over the June 30th elections. Through a status on Facebook, Haidari clarified that, together with Murizi, they are respecting the rules of the Assembly, Article 15, for the establishment of a parliamentary group. The DP parliamentary group has been created on the basis of a rightist political orientation aimed at, one, solving the political crisis through the reforming of the electoral system, two, real representation and integrity of Democrats and civic opponent in the Assembly, and three, the mission for Albania's integration into the European Union, wrote Haidari. But to participate in local elections, new MPs must be part of a political force. Regarding the SP's proposal to change the electoral system, experts say that this action is impossible given that the DP and the SMI refuse to enter the parliament. The former chair of the Socialist Movement for Integration's parliamentary group, Petru de Vassili, has accused Prime Minister Eddie Rama of destroying media freedom. He was referring to the Reporters Without Borders report regarding the World Press Freedom Index for 2019. According to Vassili, the fact that Albania has lost seven positions in the ranking shows that media freedom in Albania is being undermined. 
Moreover, he added that Albanian journalists have even received death threats in an attempt to prevent them from reporting on government affairs. According to Reporters Without Borders, Albania dropped seven positions in the rankings of the World Press Freedom Index. It shows that Albania has fallen into a precipice. This report shows what a deceiver Prime Minister Edi Rama is. Media standards were manipulated on behalf of the government. This autocracy has caused 80% of journalists to have no confidence in their professional skills, concluded Vasili. Defence Minister Alta Jachka paid an official visit to the Pentagon for the second time, where she was received by the United States Secretary of Defence, Patrick Shanahan. During their conversation, the two senior officials recognised what is increasingly called the Russian threat for the Balkans region, stating that the United States and Albania are strong partners in facing this threat. The Defence Minister described the United States as a great friend and, according to her, the fate of the region would have been very different without the support of the US as a strategic ally. We hope that within this year we will begin work on the first regional airbase for the alliance in Kuchova. This is a development that I believe recognises Albania's role in stability for the region and enhances our strategic importance for the alliance as a whole. You can always count on us whenever you need it. Our soldiers are your soldiers, expressed Jachka. The United States Secretary of Defence, Patrick Shanahan, underlined the appreciation for, among other things, Albania's commitment to peacekeeping missions and the Albanian government's target of devoting 2% of the GDP towards defence. The relationship between our two countries is strong. I want to thank you for your contribution and the fact that you have been a model ally, said Shanahan. During her visit to Washington, Minister Jajka signed an agreement with the US Department of Defence for the modernisation of the Albanian armed forces, especially the Air Force, including the receipt of a number of Black Hawk helicopters. This agreement also foresees the maintenance of these helicopters, as well as ongoing training to be provided to Albanian pilots and technicians. The plan to relocate the Northern Regional Education Directorate from Škodra to Leja under the framework of a reform project has been met with fierce opposition by the Northern Capital. The Mayor of Škodra, Voltana Ademi, did not hesitate to refer to the decision as craziness before warning that every possible action will be taken to prevent the move. I hope there can be reflection. It's never too late, despite the madness, to undertake action. I do not want to believe that this will actually be realised because it will hinder us all, said Voltana Ademi. She went on to add, if it does happen, one day we will take back the responsibility, that's for sure. I think there is always an opportunity to reflect for the purpose of sustainability. To remain stagnant, stagnant makes no sense in regards to management of this service and of this function. Meanwhile, the municipal councillors also proposed taking concrete steps to stop this decision, including district MPs. It has been learned that the decision is expected to be implemented once this academic year has come to a close. Cardiovascular diseases rank as the most prevalent in our country. The data presented by the first report on non-transmissible diseases revealed that 388,000 people suffer from cardiac insufficiency. This trend has been rising since 2011, with doctors linking this phenomenon to deteriorating lifestyles. The biggest killer remains hypertension. In just the past year, 3,800 new cases were registered in 133,000 people under the age of 40. The most problematic cities remain Korcha and Fir, while the fewest issues are found in the cities of Duras, Tirana and Vlora. The Minister of Health, Ergerta Manastir Liu, focused on increasing the number of persons who have been going for checkups, underlining that the mortality rate was down to 13%. Referring to the data presented by the Public Health Institution report, about 53.6% of deaths come from cardiovascular diseases, while 14% of them arise from cancer. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join us again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of RTV Aura, thank you and good night.